Hi, it's Tansel here. Today, I'm gonna to show you the 12 steps to improve your memory tenfold. Now, what I'm about to show you pretty much changed my life. I remember when I first started memory training, I learned about you know the memory palace, the location method, and you start practicing these skills and you do get better and better. You start remembering things, and what happened was that I did really well with these location methods and I entered memory competitions. Little did I know that the memory competitions were more than just knowing about memory techniques. It was about effective memorization for things like remembering numbers and playing cards. If we made one mistake, we'd be penalized. So we have to memorize everything perfectly. Now I was memorizing everything, but I was missing one or two things here and there, like digits and numbers and playing cards. So it wasn't as effective. It took me six years to try and win a memory competition. Uh, so for six years, I was in a, a lot of struggle uh, I was using the techniques over and over again, trying to you know, think about how can, how can I improve my memorization using these techniques. Little did I know there was something else that I was missing. So what I wanna show you is these set of principles, uh, 12 steps of these. So I'm gonna go through quite a bit to help you remember a lot better. Now I use these principles, the 12 principles to improve my training and when I entered the memory competition, <laughs> right, instead of coming second all the time, uh, I started winning and I won four years in a row every time I entered. And this was a massive difference from when I just used the techniques alone. So use the memory techniques with these principles and you'll have an amazing memory. And this is going to be a core topic. So what I mean by core topic is you need to know this plus probably something like a memory palace or maybe even linking. And I'll put the links down below uh, in the description and in the comments so you can actually refer to them every time you watch other videos from me. And the reason for that is you won't necessarily understand when I'm talking about a particular you know, application of memory if you haven't watched Memory Palace or you know the principles. So that's what I wanna do. I wanna talk about these principles in a way where you can understand them and also apply them as well because once you understand how these work, bang, you, you've got it. So the 12 steps, so I'm gonna go through them here one by one, so let's go. The first step is an S, so we're gonna be using our senses. All right, so I'll put senses here. Now what does that mean? It means that if you were to visualize, this is a texter or a pen or whatever you wanna call it, right? So if you were to visualize this, it's just a static image in your head, right? It may or may not be memorable, depending on what association you have with it. Now, what you can do with this pen is it's got attributes, right? So attributes is you can write with it, right? So now there, there's a sensation of touch. You can, you can hear the sound it makes, or well, that, that's, that's a whiteboard, but let's say the, the sound's coming from this, right? Um, you can smell it, oh, you can definitely smell it. Just, just don't inhale it heavily like I did. You can taste it. I don't want to taste this. Uh, so you, when you start using your senses, something like this, which was a previous visual imagery, becomes an experience, right? So senses is very powerful indeed. Uh, and you can use this to make things more memorable. If someone's talking to you uh, and they said it was raining last week, instead of just hearing them say, oh, yeah, it was raining, well, visualize that rain onto you. Right? Because if you can visualize it onto yourself, it's more memorable. I'm gonna talk about that as well. So using your senses, extremely, extremely powerful. Instead of sitting down on a chair, well, what can you do? Maybe you fell off, <laughs> right? So you can feel the pain of senses. Yeah, sitting down, that's still using senses, right? But now I can take it a step further. So use your senses, but also don't be afraid to take it further. Like I said, you know, smell the texture. <laughs> Just not in real life, don't inhale it, okay? <laughs> Next one is movement. Movement's a good one, because going back to that static imagery, what happens is that if an image is too static, your mind could just race over it. A little bit of movement in your imagination will help. Again, let's take this as an example. I'm not very creative this morning, but I'm gonna use this, right? So you just picture this, it's just, it's just there, right? Very boring, it's just standing there on its own, right? 
it's, it's not very engaging to the brain. If it suddenly starts to move around by itself, that's something for your brain. If it suddenly starts raining these and hitting on top of my head, that creates engagement because it's playing some sort of a story. Movement creates action, right? It, it gets your brain thinking. Don't just visualize the object moving around. Maybe you're moving around the object, right? I'm moving around it, however that looks, right? <laughs> or maybe I'm flying over the top of it. So creating movement not only engages the brain, it gets you to see from different angles. I'm gonna make a video on a memory palace on how to uh, create new ones without creating new ones, and that's using movement. So definitely stay tuned for that one. So movement, very, very powerful for your memorization. Next one, association. Now, association generally means connection, right, in the memory world. So how can we connect something? Again, static image, maybe I'm just hitting the whiteboard. That, that's a connection, right? I'm writing on the whiteboard, that's a connection. It's not necessarily the strongest connection. If I smash this pen right through the whiteboard, that's a connection, it's an extreme connection, that's what your brain will probably remember, the extreme connections, right? So you can either remember something, you know, really extreme at one end, like positive, or really negative, right? Now, if you're always a negative person, I'd probably stay away from that, but we'll look into that a bit later. Association, connection is very important. Right? Without connection, we don't get memory. Think about it, right? We don't get memory. Can we memorize? Yes, we can memorize without connection because you can add visual imagery and that, that'll help you as well. But if you really want to understand, if you really want to memorize and recall effectively, we need to be able to connect and that's what association is. Next one is using yourself. Now, what do I mean by using yourself? If you visualize yourself in the stories that you make inside your head, then it becomes so much more memorable. So if I say, here's a, <laughs> I'm using the texter. If I say, here's a texter, there's a texter, right? If I say, this is my texter, right? It's mine. I bought it with my own money. You know, I went to all that effort to go and buy it. Now you've creating a story around it. And if you've got a story around something, right? Then you can start to use your senses as well. So self can be connected to senses. You know, instead of picturing a door, right? I smack myself into a door. <laughs> See how different that is? Now you can feel it, right? And once you feel something, then your memorization goes up to another level. If you incorporate yourself into the stories, it's going to be so much better for your memorization. Right? And you could take this uh, in terms of abstract content as well. So if you're reading something uh, and it says, little Tommy went to the shop to buy some milk, right? Now that, that's talking about someone else, but maybe you're holding little Tommy's hand and walking to the milk bar, <laughs> right? To the shop to buy some milk. So you could think about these things. Think about you know, how you can use yourself to get some emotions and senses around it so it can help you with your memory. H is humor. Now I'm spelling it in the Aussie way with the U. So if you're from the States or anywhere else in the world, <laughs> right, that's without the U. So there you go, there's something for you to remember. If you make something funny, it's gonna stick out in your head. Humor is really all about how is this memorization sticking out in my head. What does that mean? That means that it doesn't necessarily have to be humor. It could be other things like horror sticking out in your head. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make a video on that as well. If something's funny, yeah, it's gonna stick out. If everything's funny, what's gonna stick out? The opposite, isn't it? So have a think about how you can use humor. If you're a naturally funny person, great. You know, use that to your advantage. If you're not a funny person, I've met a lot of people in my life like that. Remember, you can use whatever works for you it doesn't mean that you have to be funny for other people. Oh no, my jokes aren't funny. Well, as long as it gives you that emotion of, you know, oh, I'm laughing or, oh, oh, that's entertaining or whatever it is, right? Um, that thing's gonna stand out in your head. So don't be afraid to use humor. You don't have to use it for other people, use it for yourself. And if you do that, uh, it's not only gonna be entertaining <laughs> to memorize something, uh, you're gonna be learning a new skill, right? If you haven't got that before. Good one. Imagination is the next one. 
Now, if you watch my videos, you know that I use imagination quite a bit. And the reason for that is that if you make things uh, imaginative, uh, it is going to stick out in your head. And I'll, I keep saying that with all of these, right? That's what these principles are for. It's gonna help you with things sticking out in your head so it becomes memorable. Let's say, again, you've got a chicken, right? Now, if you just visualize a chicken, you might visualize how it may look and you know the sounds that it might make and, and so on. But what if that chicken was 10 foot tall, right? Running around, it had you know drool coming out of it, it was really angry. But you don't see that in everyday life. That, that, that's impossible, right? A 10 foot tall chicken, but you can make it happen in your imagination. And um, because it's different in your imagination, you go, well, you can't miss that 10 foot tall chicken. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? So using your imagination is extremely powerful. Using your imagination with, you know, in a combination of all these things is even more powerful. <laughs> so that's what we do in memory competitions. When we memorize something, we're always looking at the most effective ways to connect. Right, to associate. And if you associate using your imagination, now instead of having one very basic thing, one limited um, visual, you can have unlimited visuals. So imagination helps you in so many different ways, it gets you creative. And that's what creativity is. It gives you lots more options to work with in your brain. And that's the real power of memory. Not so that you can recall, but so that you can create. And creativity, again, helps with memorization. So that's imagination. Next one is number. Now number's an interesting one because number is abstract, right? Numbers don't make any sense. So how can we use numbers uh, as principles to helping us remember better? I'll give you an example. I was once made to train people on television to memorize a shopping list. And what I did was I trained these people up, I showed them a very basic technique, uh, they memorized the list and they went shops and got that list. In the list, there were things like, you know, you've got tuna, you've got lettuce, you've got mayonnaise, you've got cereal, and one of the items had three tomatoes. When people came back and they were doing the recall, everyone recalled the three tomatoes first. Why was that? It was because that was the only one that had a number in front of it. That's the list. And this three was sticking out like that. <laughs> so if you have anything that's sticking out, the difference, as I was mentioning with humor before, it's gonna become more memorable, right? If you have a whole bunch of numbers and suddenly there's a word in there, that's also gonna be memorable. Look at the difference. So number really means difference rather than an actual number. Yes, you can still use numbers, but there are better systems to actually memorizing numbers. Okay, so think of it that way. You can use numbers in a symbolic way, like 23 might resemble Michael Jordan. Think, okay, that's great. Or 17's on your birthday, so you, all the 17's you know is associated to you. So you can use stuff like that as well. But we're talking about number as in difference. So have a think of that. Next one is symbols. Okay, now you would have heard the saying, a picture means a thousand words. What does a symbol do? It gives you more uh, understanding around a particular thing. So for example, if you were driving, right, down, down the road or down the freeway somewhere and there's a whole bunch of signs, do these signs have symbols or are they paragraphs of writing? <laughs> right, think about that. If they had paragraphs of writing, Right, what would happen? You'd, you'd crash because by the time you read the first one, you, you're trying to make sense of the other signs and bang, you know, you're gone. So creating symbols, imagery. So let's say you're talking about peace and you're giving a peace lecture or whatever it is, maybe picture a dove, right? Uh, into your association instead of trying to remember what the talk's about. Um, yeah, it's about peace, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But use a dove as the symbol to remember the peace. And you can use symbols in a number of ways. Look, look at how people are using it now through emojis. What we're texting and communicating with each other in emojis. They're symbols, right? You look at the ancient Egyptians and you know many other ancient cultures. Uh, they were using hieroglyphs and other systems to communicate with each other and stories. Right? We've gone backwards in time. Uh, we're, we're writing in abstract bits of data with letters. That's why we have things called fonts, so it can make the letters a little bit more memorable, even though it's still abstract. So symbols helps you to not only remember, 
but understand what's behind it as well. Next one, we've got color, and I'm gonna write it in the Aussie way with the U. I'll, I'll get rid of it for you this time. There you go, color. So how do you remember things with colors? Uh, this is a really good one. Um, I don't use it personally a lot, but I know a lot of other people that do. You can use it in a way where you, know, you take something that's a usual color, let's say a red tomato, right? And picture it in the color it's not. So it could be a black tomato. Now, there probably is a black tomato somewhere, I'm sure. But if you visualize something that's not, then you know, hang on, that, that tomato is meant to be red. Oh, it's black, oh, I got it. Again, it helps you stand out like humor, like number. And it doesn't have to always be something that's different. You can have the tomato really bright red. If you can visualize a bright red tomato, it's all polished and shiny. Maybe it's 10 foot tall as well. The color's gonna work for you as well. The sky is beautifully blue. Like, can you imagine a beautiful crystal clear sky or water? Right, they don't describe crystal as sky, do they? Anyway, colors, again, extremely, extremely powerful. You know, what color is your hair? Can you visualize it without looking <laughs> into the mirror or your phone for a selfie? What color is your car? What color is your bag? Right, don't just try and think of it. See if you can expand on that color. Can you name that color? There's various forms of using color to make things more memorable. Try and uh, experiment and see how you go. Next one is order. Order is almost like remembering a story, right? So if we were to make something more memorable, we'd be making some sort of a story, right? So for example, you know, if, if I was to remember, again, this texter, I have to try and remember how I got to this text in the first place, right? I walked into the room, I checked out, there's different colors here, I checked out the different colors, I tested them out, and even though this wasn't working that well, I decided to go with this. So I've created a little backstory on using this texter. They're a little order of events, and you can use this to your advantage when trying to not just recall something, but memorize something as well. You can create an order for it. We'll use this as a basis for all our learning. So if you ever need to come back to a video, this is a video to come back to and learn all about how to make things memorable. When we're doing the Memory Palace applications, think about order. Next one, we've got P and that's for positive images. The creator of this, it's called Smash and Scope, right? And they've taken, you know, the first letters of each of these, Smash and Scope, so the last one's an E. So Tony Buzan and Van der North created this smash and scope and you know without it like i said i wouldn't have been able to win memory competitions or even help my clients grow in in a huge way positive images is looking at things in a highly emotional way now when i think of highly emotional way just visualizing a texter like that that's not really emotional is it right but if i say look i'm using this texter to help um, thousands of people out there. This is some, it's, it, it's rewarding for me to know that I'm helping people, right? Even if it's one person, that, that's an amazing thing for me. So that's a positive story that I've created with this texter, right? It's just a texter, but I'm putting meaning behind the texter now that I'm helping people. That's positive imagery, positive stories from just the one thing. Now you can also have negative as well. Now, negative stories are things like maybe you've, you know, I'm just about to write and I fall down, <laughs> I break my nose, you know, uh, it could be silly little things like that. Now, if you're a negative person, I'd probably stay away from the negative stories and just, just focus on the positive ones <laughs> because that'll help you um, become, stay more positive. But if you're fairly neutral or you can play around, play with negative stories as well, because again, it's going to stick out in your mind. I do a lot of negative stories, <laughs> you know, instead of writing on the board, uh, I make sure that maybe I'm writing on a board and suddenly my arm falls off or something like that. So that, that's, that, they're my stories, but they're in the extreme. And that's what helps me to remember. But I do love the story of I'm using the texter to help people out because that's making me feel better. And uh, it gives meaning behind this texter as well. And that, that's, that's how I feel in real life. And the final one is exaggeration. Let's see if I can fit it in here. I'll just put exaggerate. See, I use an image, <laughs> a symbol, right? Number, I use a number. 
So exaggerate. What does that mean? Exaggeration is really making things bigger, taking it to another level. I use exaggeration a lot. Again, I used it in the tomato example. I used it in the chicken example earlier. Visualize something big. If it's big, then it's big in your mind. Right? You can also exaggerate a story. Oh, it was so hard to grab this, you know, get this pen because it was so heavy. I don't know, make up something silly. But exaggeration worked for me for so many years where I was struggling to memorize and then suddenly this came along. Now I thought, hang on, what if I blow up the stories a bit? I'll make them ridiculous. I'll use imagination and exaggeration together. And once I started doing that, uh, I was not only memorizing better, like I said, I won memory competitions, I broke memory records, right? So if you were to use all of these, not, not together, I wouldn't expect people to use it together, but find what works best for you, then you're gonna start to remember a whole lot better. And I guarantee it, because if you're just using a memory palace, right, if you're just memor memorizing bit by bit by bit, um, into your locations, but not using any of this, you will still fail, you will still forget. If you're memorizing onto your locations, but you're using some of these, and you're trying to improve every time, you will no doubt see the difference. The difference will be massive. What I suggest you do is you grab a couple of words and you place them next to each other and you can do random words. You, you can jump onto my website and click on download. I'll actually, I'll put the link in the description or in the comments below where you can download these random words, right? So you take a word, for example, say toothpaste. And then you take another word, say hibernation. One, one's an abstract word and one is just uh, something you can easily visualize. What does toothpaste look like? Well, you get the basic visual of toothpaste. Now, how can we use smash and scope? Can the toothpaste be gooey? Can you get it all over your hands? What does it smell like? Is it minty? What's the color? You know, how big is it? Maybe I'm squeezing it like this because the toothpaste is really big. So we've got a, a some sort of a visual for this where we use smash and scope. I'll put S and S there. And in hibernation, now, this is an abstract word. So for abstract words, we need to create images for it. What comes to your mind when you think of hibernation? Now, a lot of people don't know what hibernation is. Watching, that's okay. Now, hibernation, some people say sleeping, right? Some people say sleeping. Some people say cave. Some people say bear. There's so many words that come to mind when people think of hibernation. So now all you have to do is grab this thing here, right, the imagery that you made with toothpaste and connect it to one of them. So I've connected it to sleep for some reason. Now we have to visualize, okay, toothpaste and hibernation. Okay, I've got this massive toothpaste. It's, it's gooey, it's all over me. It's, you know, really big, six foot tall. Uh, and then suddenly, because it's, you know, really big and I'm hugging it, I, I fell asleep on it <laughs> because it was so soft. Maybe it wasn't really hard, it was soft and it just, I just fell on top of it and started sleeping. You're probably asking the question, look, Tansel, aren't you gonna remember sleeping instead of hibernation? Well, the brain is smart enough because you know you're making a story on hibernation, right? And because you know that, you know that sleeping is going to link back to hibernation. It's just like remembering names. When people try and remember my name, they don't say Tansel, I'm gonna remember Tansel, right? They say Tinsel. <laughs> tinsel or Tonsel or yellow, yeah, like, hey utensil. They do that and it helps them remember my actual name. Right, so it's only a trigger. So think of this as a trigger to the actual word. Do that, grab a couple of words. Uh, like I said, I'll put some, I'll, I've got a random words list. So I'll put that on down below and you can download that to your heart's content. Um, there's hundreds on there. So all you have to do is refresh, refresh and you'll get as many words as you can. It's all free, so don't worry about signing up or doing anything like that. Download that and have a play around. Now, Doing this will help you use that smash and scope a lot better. So remember, as you're doing these exercises, play around with smash and scope. You know, take your time, use your visual capacities, use your association, use your imagination. Right? And the more you do that, I can guarantee the better you'll get at it. If you have come to the end of this video, please write down some of the stories you've created using Smash and Scope. I'd love to hear from you because uh, it just makes my job a lot easier to understand that you're able to do it or to understand that I'm getting some really exciting stories from it. And you know, I'd love to hear from you as well. I've been doing this for a while. Write down in the comments what stories you're creating. That's it for me for today. This is a foundation 
lesson. So what, it, what that means, it's one of the most important lessons to move forward onto other areas. So bookmark this lesson, you know, save it, uh, put it into, I don't know, your favorites or whatever it is, along with the Memory Palace videos, because moving forward, everything else that we do or everything else that I'm presenting is going to be based on the Smash and Scope. So you'll hear me say Smash and Scope and Memory Palace. So give that a go. Any questions, feel free to message me and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.